morning, everyone. It is hot and humid in Pittsburgh. I can deal with the hot, but I don't like it humid. So today, I want to. I have a video. It's kind of like a, um, you know, just a mixture of different things uh, that I want to talk about. So they kind of don't fit in anywhere. So I just thought, well, since they're misfits, I'll just put them. They maybe they can fit in with each other. I want to start out with our favorite Harry and Megan's Sussex squad these people let me just show you the three uh actually there's four of them that are so desperate and sad and pathetic they're more de i know this may come as a shock to everybody but yes there are people out there that are more sad and desperate and pathetic than megan and harry and those would be some of their fans so let me pull those up for you real quick, and then I'll tell you all about them. So we have one here, uh, Piglet. He's the least pathetic out of the, out of the four people. He's the least pathetic. Now, that does not make him not pathetic. Uh, Piglet. Um, then we have this Karma bitch. You know, I have my theories on who some of these people are. I will keep those to myself. So Piglet and Karma Bitch 202 and Carrie's Cartier, uh, formerly known as here, uh, Loopy Seven, uh, Loopy Seven something. I, I, it, it's not even important. They got their account suspended, but they're back, and you know, they're just brazen enough to let every know everyone know that they are that person. Um, I really couldn't care less if I couldn't care less if they get there accounts suspended but i actually think it's funny when we get one of their accounts suspended so we just got that um seven loopy something um the people on twitter will know suspended that's their new account and then we have a youtube channel the murky side of megxit with a whopping 63 subscribers so the murky side of Megxit, some of you are familiar with this new YouTube channel, or maybe you're not. Uh, it doesn't look like too many in people are interested in subscribing. We'll start with them. Well, we'll start with all that, all that these three Twitter accounts do all day is talk about Yankee Wally and Avid Gardner, Fiona. They've talked about me a little bit. Um, saying I look like I'm part of RuPaul's drag race because I wore my makeup heavy one time. It's called androgynous, folks. And if anybody's ever seen the Robert Palmer girls, that's how they look. I love. I thought they were like the prettiest girls like ever when I was little. But anyway, all they do is talk about Yankee Wally, Avid Gardner, me sometimes, and that's it. And this, and this murky side... Mur the murky side of Megxit is making videos about all of us. Now, what makes them so? But they say that we are are pathetic and losers because we talk about, you know, as much as I hate to put, you know, I think what I think about Harry and Meghan, but they are world figures. They are in the royal family. In theory, they make news. They make headlines. We talk about them. There is public interest in them. These people talk about us like we're ce celebrities to them. So who's pathetic? Us talking about world figures that are that are trying to affect policy in the United States. Us talking about part, uh, you know, people within the royal family that are trying to destroy the British royal family. So you have that whole kingdom, that whole commonwealth wanting to know. And then they have these these people obsessing over us like we're celebrities. And, you know, I don't know if they're trying to show like, hey, um, you know, you wouldn't like it if people talk about you. Well, I really don't give a shit if you talk about me. <laughs> I really don't. You know, there's not much to talk about. Um, that I have a mental health condition, go ahead. At least I have a documented one that can be proven. You know, I don't just say I have one like others say they have theirs and they struggle. You know, they give, they talk about their mental health, mental health. They don't say conditions, their mental health in interviews, 
you know, I actually have them. So go ahead and talk about that. That murky side of Megs that says we're all, we've all been in prison, we're in scammers, you know, blah, blah, blah. But these people are obsessed with people that aren't, that by their own admission say we're not important and we're all of these other things. So why talk about us? We're nobodies, remember? We don't matter, remember? Well, it sure seems like we matter. by the amount of time that's being spent, a whole YouTube channel has been made to talk about the murky side of Megxit. Get a life. <laughs> you tell me to get a life? You're, you t anyway, so that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I was at Best Buy yesterday, and I bought a new microphone, folks. I can't figure out how to work it. I know there are some, some people have sound issues with... Um, you know, some people can hear my videos, some people can't. I have this, like, I thought everything was supposed to, I just bought this new little, like, microphone. I can't get it to work. I can't figure out how to get it to work. It looks interesting. <laughs> so I just pulled it up. It's got cords. I did a test with it. So I'm working on it. But, um, so anyway, so I went to Best Buy to go and get a new microphone. Well, I was walking past, and I've done plenty of videos about um, Nazis and that they're still around and that you can see their Nazi symbols everywhere. Well, I went to Best Buy yesterday and sure enough, sure enough, I saw Nazi symbols. Took pictures, of course. I couldn't believe, I mean, I could believe it, but I couldn't believe it. So let me show you. I could, but I couldn't. Could, but I couldn't. So on the list, if it was for um, Galaxy phones, and they had all sorts of like, swag for you to take with you like um you know planners stickers magnets and they had a like series of pins well i looked at them and i'm like oh my god so i took two of the pins of course i had to take them so to the two of the pins are here on um i put them i thought it was i'm like gonna put my not the nazi stuff on my oss thing i just got in the mail yesterday um those are Nazi symbols, folks. And, and people that have watched my videos know that those are Nazi symbols. You have the Tula, you know, the wheel-looking thing. It's supposed to be about, like, the black sun. You know, all, when people use symbolism, they don't have to do it exact. They don't have to do it exact. It just has to have the look. And then they also had uh, the lightning symbol, which is a Nazi symbol also. So I just I just wanted to sh for all for everybody that watches those videos of mine they're you're probably like oh my god oh my god and so then I was putting this video together so where the where the lightning comes from why that why lightning is a Nazi symbol is because it well it looks like the SS symbols and then back in World War II they did the Blitzkrieg well in German Blitzkrieg Blit, Blitzkrieg means lightning war. And Waffen means weapon. But so that's where, why any like lightning stuff, that's Nazi stuff. That's Nazi stuff. You know, everything, you know, and then that lightning could also, um, as I'm looking at it closer, could also look, you know, kind of like Vril a little, a little bit. But that's a lightning because for the SS, it looks like lightning, right? And so then I was putting together this video and just looking for, you know, a couple symbols that you haven't seen so I could throw up here or put up on the PowerPoint and there's and there's a button white button down shirts with SS symbols but they're single singular and there's not two SS symbols but they're SS symbols and it's lightning shirt featuring Nazi symbol recalled by Spanish company it's everywhere folks these people are everywhere they just don't call themselves Nazis anymore They will probably talk about, you know, they're probably just saying the Tula Society and Viral Society or New World Order or whatever. You know, a lot of people did give me really good comments, you know, after the one of the last videos I did where I was talking about the Nazi occult. So there's all sorts of groups. And as mentioned, um, you know, they're all still in these societies like their parents and grandparents and people before that. 
as am I. We don't, our, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, folks, if you catch my drift. We all carry on, most, most people carry on how their ancestors were, you know, how your whole family, how you were brought up and what was instilled in them and what was instilled in them and what was instilled in them. So the fact that I'm in all these societies and in the OSS, the fact that I'm in all of those things, these people are still in all of these things. So I thought you'd find those interesting. And now we're going to get to <laughs> the United States is such a, it's, we're in just a, such a sad state of affairs. I'm not sure if, and it made, it made the world, well, it made the news. Like I will, I have my like things when I type in, this thing's driving me nuts. Wireless society, right? I've, I have more wires like than, anyway. So. I saw, so I, I do my, like, like, I'll search for Putin, Ukraine, Russia, Biden, Prick, Megan, um, you know, Cousin Eddie, and, and things like that. So I saw a news headline yesterday. I just, I wasn't able to get, or maybe it was the day, it was two days ago. I wasn't able to get uh, to a video, get it out into a video. We are in such a sad state of affairs. Listen to what they did to Vladimir Putin. So somebody, and I don't know who it was, but Biden would have to okay this. Somebody thought it was a good idea to put sanctions and freeze the assets of Vladimir Putin's rumored, rumored girlfriend. Yes, you heard me correctly, folks. The United States sanctioned Putin's girlfriend and froze all of her assets. Is this where we are? Is this our strategy moving forward? Because I can tell you that probably went over like a lead balloon. You know, no one ever sanctioned Ava Braun's assets or did anything to her. Like, what? what who? Who thought this was a good idea? Who came up with it? And if they came up with it, it had to be okayed by Biden. I'm like embarrassed that this is this is our strategy. And then in the articles, the reason the reason now Vladimir Putin's rumored girlfriend um is not like an oligarch. She's not uh an oil baron. She's not a real estate mogul. She's none of those things. She was like a rhythmic gymnast, gymnast. That's all. So I'm sure she really didn't do any, like what, what, what could she possibly be? What sort of, you know, I'm sure she wasn't running guns or, and or children anywhere for us to do that. How do you think that that went over? Now, I don't believe that Vladimir Putin is going to send nuclear missiles over here because they sanctioned the girlfriend, but he's going to do something. He's going to do something. But Joe Biden is in a very bad way. This is our strategy. Oh, they said that the reason why that they sanctioned her is because Putin invaded Ukraine. That was the reason. He's gone. There's nobody home. If I was Vla Vladimir Zelensky, I'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, because... I don't know. But it, it, it's... I really just don't really have any words for, for it. Other than, is this, is this it? Is this the best we got? Is this what we're doing? Is this our military strategy or intel or is this some sort of strategy saying freezing the assets of Vladimir Putin's girlfriend I mean what are you thinking they're not he's brain dead he's brain dead so then speaking of Ukraine and Russia an ex 
ex-German chancellor, you know what, before I go on to that, what do you think, like, Boris Johnson, or whoever the person's supposed to be, and Vladimir, well, just Vladimir Zelensky, and the rest of these world leaders thought when they heard that the United States sanctioned a rhythmic gymnast that's rumored to be Vladimir Putin's girlfriend, for the simple fact of Putin invaded Ukraine. What do you think they thought? They either... Most of them probably, the ones that we're not like really like allies with probably laughed hysterically and was like, oh my God, oh my God. Our, our allies are like, oh my God, what's he doing? <laughs> what's he doing? Because, you know, let's just, thank goodness Vladimir Putin, in my opinion, seems like a measured man. Like I said, he's not going to be sh- shooting nuclear weapons over here because of that. But, you know, others might, but... Whatever we do, whatever bonehead decisions we make, not me, not my president, he's not my president. Joe Biden might be the president of the United States, but he is not my president. My president got the election stolen from him, but I won't talk about that. D. Schweiger, I know. <laughs> I have a viewer, a viewer, D. Schweiger, who's a Democrat. You know, she loves the channel and what, what we all talk about and everything. But, um, you know, I had to put that in for her. I won't elaborate on that, D. So, whatever Biden does, and he's still, the United States, in theory, is still the leader of the world. Biden's still the leader, of, in theory, of the free world. Whatever he does, he's going to drag these other countries into it. And doing, stu- like, what's the next stupid thing that he's going to do? Because you know there will be more. And if this is if this is the best the United States intelligence can come up with, which I don't think that they come, come up with, came up with this. I don't think a desk jockey at, at the DOJ came up with it. I think Joe Biden came up with it. But this is the best we can do, and they can't, you know, the, the, good, the good people of the United States intelligence and military and everything are probably like, oh God, but they have to do what he says. He's the commander-in-chief. He's not my commander-in-chief, but he's the commander-in-chief, so they have to do what he says. He, he's very dangerous. Joe Biden is very, very dangerous. He's going to get people killed. He's going to get us, get people, other countries dragged into stuff with this decision making that he's doing because it's not a good idea and I'm not just I mean I I would think it would be a terrible idea to say like that's like he might as well have sanctioned Putin's wife or daughters I mean that's a personal hit on Vladimir Putin and what do you think that Putin's just gonna let that go now if I were Vladimir if I were Vladimir Putin I would go for where's Hunter Biden that would be my move. So, but it's going to be, it, it just shouldn't have, it, it just shouldn't have. Anyway, moving on. So you have an, well, first of all, you have Vladimir Zelensky and his wife glamorizing war in Vogue. And Vogue is guilty of it also. I mean, look at it. I wonder how much her coat costs. I bet you they told you what kind of brand it was, what the fashion label was. I bet you. You know, all that stuff's definitely mentioned. But so they're glamorizing war. And ex-German Chancellor Gerard, or Gerhardt, I'm sorry, it's like my screen's far away, Gerhard Schroeder, has met Putin and is friendly with Putin. And he met with him, and he's catching all sorts of shite for it. Vladimir Zelensky is not happy about it. Zelensky's not happy about it. Why? Why is this German chancellor who is trying to broker peace or talk, you know, talk to Putin about whatever he talked to Putin about, why is everybody so upset with this man? It almost makes you wonder, do these people even really want peace? I mean, there's no harm. You know, talking in meetings with somebody is better than shooting missiles and guns at people to get peace, right? 
Why are they giving this German Chancellor such a hard time? Makes you wonder that they... You know, if Putin and Zelensky can't get their differences, you know, work out their differences, somebody should keep an open line with uh, Putin, right? To, like, come to a deal, like, make an agreement here. And Germany's on this, probably, or this ex-German chancellor is probably, you know, he's on the side against Putin, but he's friendly with Putin. He can speak to him in a measured way. And everybody's mad at him for trying to talk. and Just like, you know, everybody was mad at Donald Trump for talking to Kim Jong-un. Why? Talking is so much better than missiles and guns. Nobody wants peace talks. Nobody wants peace. You know why? There's no money in peace. There's a lot of money in war. And Zelensky... Zelensky definitely doesn't want because he's getting all the attention on on Ukraine. He's getting boatloads of dough from all over the world. He doesn't want that to stop. If the, if Putin if if this German Gerard Schroeder or Gerhard Schroeder broke get some sort of thing that the money dries up for the the military industrial complexes. Zelensky, you guys are smart. So. When I ask why don't they want peace talks, that's just a rhetorical question. It's a rhetorical question. So I guess my point of this video to this this video today, I, I think I have another one to come out, is these are the people that are supposed, well, not Harry and Meghan, but they're world figures. But these are the people you have Joe Biden picking picking on bully Joe Biden bullied Vladimir Putin is bullying Vladimir Putin's girlfriend. Then you have Zelensky glamorizing war in vogue. Not and everybody's upset with some German chancellor because he's trying to talk to Putin and figure something out. And back to the whole Kim Jong Un. Back to Kim Jong Un. Nothing's going to happen unless you talk to the people. You just nothing gets so, nothing gets solved shooting bullets, missiles and not talking. Bullets and missiles are a last resort and they are to be used to get you to the point of talking. That's the only way you can solve problems, but they don't like it. And they didn't want Trump talking to Thank goodness there's bullets with uh North Korea and everything but you know what I mean so all these world leaders we have a bully of a, a, a rhythmic gymnast we have Prince Harry and Meghan alleged world leaders everybody knows they're not Zelensky not happy about an ex-German chancellor talking to I could just go on for days oh and the little Nazi uh, pins that I saw at Best Buy so it's a sad state of affairs, folks. Kind of just, uh, again, another messy video. Um, but wanted to put that out there. Definitely looking forward to your comments on everything. But Joe Biden is dangerous, and he's going to drag us in. He's going to drag the United States and our allies, any NATO countries, into something bad. He's, he's nobody's home. But he's still, nobody's, nobody's, so, uh, um, the lights are on. The lights are on, but you're not home. <laughs> um, that's the Robert Palmer thing. The lights are on, but nobody's home. He's still making the decision. He can still hit the button. So, that's all. Looking forward to your comments. See you later.